All right, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. This is James over here with you. Glad you're with us this afternoon. We have an interesting uh, subject for you to be discussing today as um, uh, we're looking at some headlines from around the country. And I'm reading here in front of me, I have a headline that says, A pastor receives a vision from the Lord as he pays respects to Billy Graham in the U.S. Capitol. Uh, very interesting uh, topic, I guess you might say, and we're going to be looking at that. How how do we know that was a vision from the Lord? I mean, he goes on to describe what it was uh, in detail, vivid detail, you might say. And so we're going to be looking at, well, how is it that we can determine if someone uh, has received this vision? What was, uh, what was the purpose of it? Um, uh, are we to believe every vision that comes along, you might say. So a pastor receives a vision while he's uh, visiting the, uh, the funeral or the, the, the body, really the body of Billy Graham that's laying in the, the U.S. Capitol, and uh, he receives a vision. So we're going to see if that is the case as we go through our study today right here on the Word from the Lord. Friends, the Word from the Lord is brought to you by the church that meets at two feet of the boulevard in Eden. Uh, we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. for Bible study. And if you'd like to have a, a Bible home Bible study or would like to uh, have any kind of information, literature that you might want to study on your own, just uh, contact me. You can reach me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com, a word from the Lord at gmail.com, or you can call me at 276-340-2653, 276-340-2653, and that's how, how you can reach me. And uh, I'd be glad to, to hear from you and help you any way I can. Uh, if you'd like to be part of the program today, the phone number is area code 336-427-9696, 336-427-9696, that's 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627 Nine five six three six two seven W L O E, or you can call me on my on my cell phone two seven six three four zero two six five three, two seven six three four zero two six five three, and we'll uh, put you on there that way. But we're glad to have uh, have your calls uh, coming in and having Bible discussion as we go through our study today. As we're going to talk about dreams and and visions and 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 the Holy Spirit and how how do we know if this is really what's happening today. You know, dreams and visions or, or products of the of the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. If you are familiar with your Bible in Acts chapter 2, uh, Acts chapter 2, the Holy uh, Ghost, the Holy Spirit fell on the apostles there in Acts 2 and they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were accused of being drunk and Peter and the other 11 were standing up there and Peter said, um, ye men of Judea, uh, all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words, for these uh, are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, and on my servants and my handmaids will I pour out of uh, uh, of my spirit, and will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And so, this is what we're what we're considering today. Is this what we're talking about happen? Uh, the article. I'd like to read some of the article as the man is talking about seeing this vision. Uh, here's the article. It's from uh, uh, ChristianHeadlines.com. Pastor receives a vision of, from the Lord as he pays respects to Billy Graham in U.S. Capitol. It says, Jared Alasky, a pastor of Destiny Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia, attended the ceremony in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda last Wednesday in honor of Billy Graham. While there, Lasky says he received a vision from the Lord. Uh, and so then he describes it. He said, I've never met Graham, although he greatly admired him in his ministry. But here's what he says. He says, as he was in the Rotunda, where the body was lying in state, uh, this is when he says he received the vision from the Lord. He says, as he looked up at the fresco uh, on the what's painted on the ceiling, 
Lasky says, I was immediately reminded of when Elijah was taken up in the fiery chariot and his cloak fell to the earth in 2 Kings 2. Before the prophet was taken, his student Elisha asked for a double portion anointing. Elisha witnessed when the fiery chariot took Elijah, took up Elijah in the prophet's cloak or mantle, fell to the earth. Elisha picked up the cloak, and as he carried it back, the other prophets saw that the spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha. He now carried the authority and anointing of his predecessor, which was symbolized with him possessing the prophet's cloak or mantle. Standing in the rotunda, Lasky continues, When I saw the mantle falling from above, I asked the Holy Spirit, Who will take the mantle of Billy Graham? Lasky then says he received his answer from the Lord. Quote, It is not for just one person, but for a generation. The anointing for revival is for a generation that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. It is for a generation that knows me intimately. When Billy Graham received his anointing, it was also available to others as the mantle belongs to the Lord, and he gives it as he wills. Yet many are called, but few are chosen. And many decided not to walk with the mantle of the Lord, but Billy Graham was a willing vessel, surrendered to the risen Savior, but now the mantle, the authority, and the anointing that he had in his life is available to this present generation who will make a way for the coming awakening. Uh, now, I'm supposing that's what what uh, Lasky heard from the Lord. So God says all this about Billy Graham receiving a mantle and he gave the mantle to other people, but they rejected it. Now, friends, this is the question that I have. This is the, the uh, wonderment that I, I'm wondering about. Is this part of, is this vision something that that uh, was supposed to be for everybody? I mean, was was this a vision that was part of the pouring out of the Holy Spirit there in Acts 2? I mean, is that what we're talking about? Because the reason why I'm asking that is because if that were the case, we need to understand something about this pouring out of the Holy Spirit. I mean, how did it happen? How was how was the Holy Spirit given? See, I don't I don't think people realize when they say things like this that the only way we're going to know for sure about anything that the Holy Spirit does today is to consult the word that the Holy Spirit has given us. And so uh, do people receive the Holy Spirit today like they did in Acts chapter 2 even? Uh, is this part of the pouring out of the Spirit that that uh, Peter talked about when he quoted Joel? And so uh, how, how are we going to know these answers? Well, the Bible says if you seek, you'll find answers. In, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, Matthew 7 and verse 7, Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So if we're really looking for the answers in the Bible, friends, we're going to be able to find them. We're going to be able to know if... if uh, uh, the the things that people say or claim to be from God, like this vision that Mr. Lasky saw, is it really is it really part of it? So, one way to do that is to ask questions, and as you're reading, ask questions about, uh, you know, what's going on. I, I'm saying think think critically. Now, if you listen carefully as you read, and you stop and you ask some questions and see if if what you're reading and what you're concluding about a certain thing, is it harmonizing with the Bible in another place? Then then we can know for some some certainty about what's going on. But see, friends, when people just claim, when people just claim, well, this is a vision, this is a vision, you have so much confusion. You don't get you don't get clarity, you actually get confusion about what is inspired and what is not. I want you to listen to what uh, a, a man said. Now this is a man that's that's defending Ellen G. White. And he's a Seventh-day Adventist named Ron Rogers. And he made this statement several years ago. But this is a, a comment that he made after defending, I'm saying he's, going to, he's defending Ellen G. White and the fact that she was inspired and that she had visions. Listen to what he has to say. It's about, it runs about a minute, uh, 15 or so. But just listen to what he has to say and and. See how it compares with what we're today. I made the presentation at the digital data conference uh, uh, room or hall. Uh, Mr. Ophiel was there. 
later, when I watched his television program, he said on that television program, he mentioned something about Ellen's wife, and uh, he had on the screen from the book uh, Early Writings a statement that she had made about a vision that she had. And uh, the book of uh, Joel, the second chapter, tells us that in the, in the time of the end, the last days, that there will be those who will have dreams and those who will have visions. Well, uh, that's, that's a prophecy that uh, we find in the book of Joel. God said to, to Joel, and so if somebody has a vision or a dream here in these last days, well, so what? He did say that she had these visions, and she wrote them down. Friends, she had to be inspired some way or another by God to write such beautiful uh, literary uh, uh, words describing the life of Christ and the, the gospel and how to come to Jesus. Okay, so there he is. He quotes he quotes uh, Joel. Joel's going to pour out of the Spirit, and so this is what we're uh, seeing with the writings of Ellen G. White. Now, friends, I don't know uh, about you, but Ellen, I don't accept Ellen G. White, uh, White's writings as authoritative or inspired. But if we're going to accept uh, Mr. Lasky's um statement that this was a vision from God, then we have to then accept Ellen G. White's statement that it was a vision from God, or the Seventh-day Adventist's um, um, statement that what Ellen G. White saw was a vision from God. You see how that works? We can't just take what someone says and say, yeah, that's, that's, that's a vision from God. They had a vision from God, and then reject what someone else says. I mean, because really the proof that we have of Ellen G. White is the same proof we have of of Mr. Lasky about the vision that he supposedly saw while he was uh, uh, looking or praying over the body of, of Billy Graham. And so my point is the way we're going to really find out uh, anything is really just to go to the Bible. I mean, that's how we're going to find out if, uh, if, if it's true or not. So we have to ask some questions. We have to look and, and let's listen carefully as we're reading these things, and, and if we ask these questions, then we can come to a conclusion here. Now, what I want to do is I want us to go to Acts chapter 19. Because Acts chapter 19 is a, is a, um, it, it's a good uh, passage of Scripture where you have individuals that are asked a question about the Holy Spirit. And today we have so much... Uh, differing views on what the Holy Spirit uh, does and what he says and how he acts that um, you, you'll get, if you ask 10 people, you'll get 10 or 12 different answers. And so let's just listen to what the Bible has to say as the Apostle Paul approaches some individuals and asks them about the Holy Spirit, about the Holy Ghost. So we're in Acts chapter 19. If you have your Bibles, and friends, I encourage you, if you're, if you're listening, you're following along, uh, jot down these notes, um, ask questions, jot down questions that you have, call in and ask those questions, or um, if nothing else, go back and just see if what we're saying is true or not. I mean, Acts 17, verse 11, the Bereans did that. They checked it out. I don't expect you to take my word for anything that I say at face value. I expect you to go back and... Uh, listen, study, read, and examine the scriptures for yourself. Now, so let's let's look at Acts 19. Acts 19, we're starting in verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Now, Let's, let's stop there for a moment. Paul asks, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, that question of itself tells us something about receiving anything, any miraculous gift or anything from the Holy Spirit. Just that question itself tells us something. It tells us that Paul expects certain things if they had received the Holy Spirit and he expects certain things if they had heard of the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's just a lot of 
lot of, of, of things that that answer, that question uh, will answer. Now, let's stop for a moment. Let's, let's ask this question. What if someone asked that question today? Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Well, you get differing views on how you receive the Holy Spirit. You get different statements about re receiving the Holy Spirit and, and actually what he does. Now, for example, here's a quote from the Baptist Faith and Message. And this is what they say about the Holy Spirit. This is under the, under the heading, God, the Holy Spirit. This is what they write. And I'm quoting from the Baptist Faith and Message. They say, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He inspired holy men of old to write the scriptures. All right, I don't have a problem with that. That's, that's, that's pretty good so far. But notice this. Here's the next statement. Through illumination, he enables men to understand truth. Now, Paul asked the question, have you received the Spirit since you believed? Now, this passage from the Baptist Faith and Message actually implies that people got the Spirit before they were saved, right? In other words, the Holy Spirit had to illuminate the scriptures in order for them to understand the scriptures. Now, if you believe the Bible, as I believe the Bible, the Bible tells us that the gospel is the power of God to save, Romans 1 and verse 16. All right, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. So, if someone, if someone believes that the Holy Spirit has to illuminate the scriptures, then they believe they have to receive the Holy Spirit before they're saved. All right, They have to have the Holy Spirit in order to understand the scriptures that are going to save them. Now, if Paul asked this question, if Paul asked this question to folks who believe this way that we just described, uh, well, why would he even ask it, right? If they understood anything, I mean, they were disciples, so they would have to have the Holy, had the Holy Spirit, right? They would have said, well, we were illuminated by the Spirit in order to, to uh, be saved. We were illuminated by the Spirit in order to, have disciples, to be disciples. See, so Paul would know immediately how they answered the question, um, what they believed or what they knew or understood about the Holy Spirit. Now, so if the Holy Spirit is given before they believed, Paul would not have asked the question the way he did. See, listen with me again. Read with me again. Think with me again. If someone believes you received the Holy Spirit before you believe or before you even understand the Bible, Listen to what Paul asked. He said, have you received the Spirit, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, right? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, if Paul understands that the Holy Spirit comes and illuminates things before people even understand the Bible, he would not have said since you believed. He would have known right off the bat. These folks are disciples. They, they have been illuminated by the Holy Spirit. See, they would have been illuminated by it. So Paul, Paul doesn't believe that you're illuminated by the Spirit in order to understand the Bible, or he would have never asked the question this way. I mean, why would he even ask? You see, if if the Holy Spirit was given before someone saved. If the Holy Spirit was given in order to illuminate the scriptures or to give an enlightenment, a knowledge to what you must do to be saved, then Paul would never have said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? You see the power of just simply looking at what is said and what is stated? So, I mean, so now we have some more questions. I mean, is a person illuminated without the Holy Spirit? doing anything to them? I mean, how, how, how is it illumination works? I mean, does a person feel anything? Does he know anything? Does he, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, how, how do you know if you're illuminated or not? 
I mean, how do you know if, I mean, if you believe the Holy Spirit illuminates you before you even read the Bible and can understand the Bible, how, how do you know the Holy Spirit did anything to you at all? See? So that's my question. But Paul said, since you believe, which tells me that he knew that the Holy Spirit does not come upon an individual or does not do anything for an individual, to an individual, or anything like that, before they believe. He, he never would have said since. See that? So, so that question alone, when Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe, that just knocks the bottom uh, out of this idea that you have to have some miraculous operation, some guidance from the Holy Spirit in order to even understand the Bible. I mean, that's just, that, that's just all there is to it. So, what about this? Does a person receive the Holy Spirit then at the point of being saved? Does someone receive the Holy Spirit at the point of being saved? Not before. We know that's not right. I mean, Paul asked the question, since you believe. So, maybe someone received this Spirit. Maybe they received this some kind of miraculous outpouring or whatever at the point of being saved. Now, the reason why I say that is because there are some individuals, and I think usually probably individuals like in the, in the Pentecostal movement, that will believe, yeah, you get you receive the Holy Spirit at the point of, of being saved. Listen to what this, this man says. This is Benny Dodson. Benny Dodson wrote a letter to the editor uh, many years ago. He's a preacher up in Martinsville. But this is how he characterized his salvation. All right, he, this is what he says. He says, I was baptized in water in Jesus' name. I went into the water a practicing confessed sinner and seemingly a born loser, but I came up out of the water speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave me utterance. So he's saying at the point of his baptism, and I, I'm saying belief, uh, but at some point this was this was like a simultaneous thing. He was baptized in the water. He came up speaking in tongues. So he received the Spirit at the point of being saved or at the point of being baptized, however you want to describe it. Now, we have to go back to, to uh, what Paul said. We have to go back to what Paul said. If the Holy Spirit was given at the point of belief, why would Paul even ask? I mean, Paul finds these, uh, these disciples. And some way he knows they believe. I don't know what the conversation was. But it's concluded they are disciples. I mean, the Bible calls them disciples. When Luke's writing it, he calls them disciples. So they are disciples. That means they're believers. And Paul says, again, he asks the same question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Now, if Paul, who is an apostle, if he knows when the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer and how the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer and what the Holy Spirit does to or for the believer, why would he even ask? I mean, why do you ask a question, have you received the Holy Spirit? since he believed, if he knows that a person receives the Holy Spirit at the point of believing. See that? The fact that, that they believe, that would have told Paul already, though, they've already received the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm talking about, friends? So we're, we're, looking at, we're looking at what people say and believe and what they practice, and we're comparing it to the Bible, and we're saying, you know what, there's, there's some problems with that statement. A person is not going to receive the Holy Spirit uh, at the point of being saved or at the point of being baptized or point of belief because Paul asked a question to individuals uh, who we know were believers and they said we didn't even heard the Holy Spirit. So again, now we, we come to the, to the question of is is the Holy Spirit uh, playing favorites? I mean, does the Holy Spirit come on people today 
and do things for them and and uh, illuminate them and things like that differently than he did in the first century. See, I, I can have people tell me all they want to about the Holy Spirit and what he does for them and how he acts upon them today. And friends, I'm not going to believe it unless I can confirm it by what I know is true, and that's the Bible. So let me take you back to what um, this um, Mr. Uh, Lasky said. He says he saw a vision. He says he saw a vision, and that was and God spoke to him. God, he got his answer from God, and I'm supposed to take that as, as truth. But I ain't gonna do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not taking what someone says at at face value when they say, "Well, God spoke to me, or I had a vision, and and." It reminded me of I saw Elijah and Elisha and the cloak from heaven and fiery chariot and all that stuff. Well, look, I'm glad you know your Bible. I'm, I'm glad that you've read your Bible. I'm not glad you know who Elisha is, and I'm glad you know uh, who Elisha is, and I'm glad you know the you know the story of of uh, Elijah going up into heaven. And I'm glad you know where it is. I mean, most, most people don't know that it's in Second Kings chapter two. So I'm, I'm glad that, but other than that, friends, I don't, I don't take what this man says as truth because I look at the Bible and I say, well, you know, there's some, there's some problems here. There's some, there's some discrepancies um, because Paul asked these individuals in Acts chapter 19 that he knew were believers if they received the Holy Ghost and and they said, hadn't even heard of him. Hadn't even heard about the Holy Ghost. So that tells me that here's a man, uh, Mr. Lasky, who says he had a vision, claimed he had a vision. Um, he's not representing God or the Holy Spirit, miraculous gifts that, that are given by the Spirit that was to be accompanied by the pouring out of the Spirit. He's not representing them correctly according to, to what the, how the Bible shows them. So I'm not, going, I'm not taking him at face value, you see. If, if, if the, the Holy Spirit is given at the point of salvation or at the point of belief, uh, Paul didn't know that. Paul didn't understand that. And if anybody, now tell me if you agree, if anybody understands or would understand how the Holy Spirit works, how he operates, what he does to or for a believer, it would be the Apostle Paul. True or false? True or false? The Apostle Paul would know as well as anybody, if not better than anybody, how or what the Holy Spirit does to or for a person. That's true. And so if, if, Paul is having to ask, if Paul is having to ask questions about what's going on in, uh, uh, when, he, when, he finds, when he finds these people in, um, uh, in Ephesus, then I sure I'm going to ask questions about someone that I'm reading about that supposedly has a vision uh, as they're praying over the body of Billy Graham. See that? I'm, I'm just going, well, you know, that's a nice story, but let's check it with the Bible. Let's check it with the Bible. Now, so here's what we have. Paul's question in Acts 19 and verse 2, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed, has really put an answer to individuals that believe you have to have the Holy Spirit illuminate the scriptures before you can be saved. It it answers that. It just knocks it out of the ballpark. That can't be true. Or Paul would never have to question that way. He wouldn't have said, since you believed. It answers this idea of receiving the Holy Spirit at the point of belief or the point of salvation, as some people want to say. They want to say you're saved at the point of salvation. So if the Holy Spirit is given at the point of belief, the minute you believe, then... Uh, that can't be true because, again, why would Paul have to ask? He knew they were believers. 
So we know that this idea of immediately receiving the Holy Spirit uh, when you believe, that has to be false. That has to be false because Paul wouldn't have asked that question. So let's, let's look at another way. Maybe the Holy Spirit is received that the outpouring of the Spirit is given immediately after baptism. Maybe it's not the point of belief, and I'm, I'm using the way the denominations talk about this, the, the point of belief or the point of salvation, that's, that's how they would say it, versus baptism. Now, they would say you're saved and then you're baptized. Maybe you receive the Holy Spirit at the point of baptism or immediately after baptism. Well, is that, is that, the, uh, is that the way it goes? I mean, is that, is that how the, the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon individuals? Uh, is, is that at the point? Uh, let me just see if we can... I'm going to try to give you an illustration of how people believe on this regard. Um, here we go. And see if this just gives a good illustration of what people say or do, what they believe, practice or teach about the Holy Spirit. Now this is... Um, Jackie Poe from the Mercy Crossing. Now, he's not in Mercy Crossing anymore. He's somewhere in Danville. But listen to what he has to say. This is him on the Holy Spirit baptism. But they thought that it was all going to be over. But then on the day of Pentecost, the, the disciples, 120 people, got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And thank God, God still baptized with the Holy Ghost today in these last days. He's still doing what he did then. Praise the devil cannot stop what God started. God started the Pentecost a long time ago, and he's still doing it today. Praise God. He's still pouring his holy power out today for those that want it. There's more to this Holy Ghost power than just praying in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. There's more to this than shouting and jumping and all that. You understand. Are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? You got the power. But if you've recently been saved, or if you've been saved for a long time, and you haven't been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen? What did he say, Ethel? You need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Here's the sad thing about so many Church of God folks, though. They'll get baptized with the Holy Ghost. And when, when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, same thing. When you get baptized with the Spirit of God, everybody that gets baptized with the Spirit of God can pray in other tongues. Amen? Everybody can. Everybody can. And everybody ought to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. What qualifies you to be baptized with the Holy Ghost? Say. Say. Man, y'all are quiet on that for some reason. That's, that's what qualifies you saved. All right, so if you're saved, you're qualified to receive the Holy Ghost according to uh, the Church of God. Now, he said a lot. he said a lot in there. Um, that we, we could dissect, but did you, you hear what he said? You've you got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So you can, you can be saved and not be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, okay. So according to Mr. Mr. Poe, then this is going to take place after you're baptized, and I'm assuming after, after, you're, after you're saved. But is it immediately? Does it come... Uh, simultaneously or spontaneously. Now that's what the uh, uh, that's what Mr. Dodson said. Mr. Dodson said he came up by the water speaking in tongues. Now Mr. Poe said well if you're saved you're qualified to receive the Holy Ghost. So uh, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at these questions now. We have some questions. If, if the Holy Spirit was given automatically now that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking automatically. If the Holy Spirit was given automatically after being saved, why would Paul ask? Again, if anybody knows how the Holy Spirit operates, if anybody knows how the Holy Spirit worked when it came to uh, acting upon or being poured out upon or affecting the new Christian's life, in any way, shape, or form, it would be the Apostle Paul. And yet, here he meets some folks on 
uh, on his travels as he comes through Ephesus, and he says, "Well, he knows they're they're. He knows that they are believers, and he says, "Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed?" So again, why would Paul ask? Why would Paul ask? Now, now, friends, Acts nineteen is going to give you some good commentary on Acts 2 verse 38. Let's look at Acts 2 verse 38 because this is a verse that a lot of people like to run to and try to give an explanation about what happens but they don't listen to what Paul has to say when it's written again. Acts 2 and verse 38. When they heard this they were preaching in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now somebody's going to say, We're right there, James. See, you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and boom, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Automatic. Well, but did you hear what Paul said? Paul said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, no. Well, we hadn't even heard about the Holy Spirit. We don't, even, we don't even know about the Holy Spirit. Now, if it took place immediately, why didn't they know about it? And why would Paul ask? See? What, what do you, you know? What, what did Jackie Paul say? What's the prerequisite? What, what qualifies you for Holy Spirit baptism? Saved. Well, it must not happen immediately, though. It must not happen immediately. So, it, it, because if it did, then Paul wouldn't have had to ask that question. He wouldn't have had to ask that question. But he knew that something was, something was off because they, they professed to believe, but they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. So, uh, or they profess to believe, and then he asked them about the Holy Spirit. So, uh, again, when you're looking at the two verses, Acts 2 verse 38 and Acts 19, you know that Holy Spirit baptism, or you shall receive to get the Holy Spirit. Receiving to get the Holy Spirit does not come automatically. It does not come automatically. Now, well, maybe it comes this way. Maybe... A person receives the the Holy Spirit, miraculous gifts, the ability to have visions and prophesy and heal and speak in tongues and, and things like that. Maybe it comes to the laying on the apostles' hands. Hmm. You think about that? Maybe that's how it works. Maybe that's how it took place. Maybe that's why Paul was asking. It would really explain why Paul asked, wouldn't it? I mean, here was an apostle, and he has the ability to lay hands on individuals and give them miraculous gifts. So it makes sense that he would ask, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Because Paul would know <laughs> the Holy Spirit doesn't come before you're saved. It doesn't come immediately when you are saved. It doesn't come after you're saved uh, automatically, there has to be some some function uh, that imparts these miraculous gifts from the Holy Spirit, and that's through the laying on the apostles' hands. We know that from Acts chapter eight, Acts chapter eight and verse thirteen. Philip has gone down to Samaria, and, and all Samaria, uh, the Bible says that uh, the uh, the whole city, you know, came out to hear Samaria. And they, they, when they believed him, was preaching concerning the kingdom of God. Um, in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And then notice in verse 14, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Now why would they send Peter and John down there? Why would they send Peter and John? Verse 15 tells us why. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, what causes the Holy Spirit to fall upon individuals? What causes the Holy Spirit to, to uh, um, be manifest 
in different people who have believed. It, if it's not before you're saved, it's not during your salvation, it's not immediately after your salvation, it's not, you know, all these different times and places uh, and ways that people say they received the Holy Spirit. So how, how, do we, how do we know? Well, they sent Peter and John down to Samaria to lay hands on them, right? Verse 17, Acts 8, verse 37, 37, Acts 8, 17. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. So it's through the laying on the, of the apostles' hands. That's what, uh, that's what Paul knew. That's what Paul understood about the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit, and that's why he asked, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Because he had the ability to give it. He had the ability to give these miraculous gifts to these individuals who had believed, and that's why he asked that question. Understanding that they didn't receive it before they were saved, they didn't receive any kind of uh, Holy Spirit guidance to illuminate them, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit immediately when they believed, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit when they were baptized and come up out of the water um, speaking in tongues, see, so there has to be uh, some some understanding here. Paul asked this question because he knows he has the ability to give these miraculous gifts, to impart some miraculous uh, uh, gifts on these individuals by laying hands on on them. And the Bible says that's what he did in Acts chapter nineteen. Um, Acts chapter 19 the Bible says that uh, when they when Paul explained to him about John's baptism verse 6 says when then Paul had laid his hands and when Paul had laid his hands on them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied it was all after Paul laid hands on them now you have some questions about this comments I've kind of been going on not giving you a chance to call or talk but the phone number is 427-9696-427-WMYN, that's area code 336, area code 336-627-9563, 627-WLOE. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. Uh, you can call me 276-340-2653 as well. Now, friends, you know, I know some of you out, out there are listening and you're in, the, in, a, in a Pentecostal church or you're in a, a church that believes in miraculous gifts and, and, and so forth. And I'm really wanting to have some dialogue with you and kind of pick your brain, so to speak, why you believe what you believe and how you can believe what you believe, given what the Bible is saying. Now, listen, listen, here's what we know. This is what we know about, about the Holy Spirit. We know that Paul understood that it did not come before, during, or immediately after. Someone was... Uh, saved or baptized or however you want to term it. He just didn't do that. He didn't understand it that way. And if Paul didn't understand it that way, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side with Paul. Now, listen, receiving the Holy Spirit was the same as receiving miraculous gifts. Otherwise, how would people know? See, we've got to ask some questions here. How would people know if they had received the Holy Spirit. I mean, let's think about it. Let's say, let's Paul ask the question again. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, yes. Yes, yes, we've, we've received the Holy Spirit since we believed. All right, and so then, then Paul says, well, well how, how do you know? How do you know that you have the Holy Spirit? Now, see, I would ask that question today. People say, I've, I've got the Holy Spirit today. Oh, I, I know i got the Holy Spirit today. Okay, how do you know? How do you know? How would they know in the first century? See, I'm wanting, I'm wanting to get you to think. I'm wanting to, I want you to use your, your noggin. You know, get the old gears grinding in there. How would they have known if they had received the Holy Ghost? Now, because apparently... They knew they hadn't received the Holy Ghost. They hadn't even heard about the Holy Spirit. But Paul says, have you received the Holy Spirit since they believed? If they had said yes, Paul would have immediately said, well, how did you receive it? How 
How'd you receive these gifts? How'd you receive the Holy Spirit? How do you know? Or maybe he might say, well, how do I know that you have the gift of the Holy Spirit? Or how do I know that you have the Holy Spirit? Uh, you think they might say, well, feelings. I, I just feel I got the Holy Spirit. Friends, is that really a way to know? Honestly, seriously. Is that a way to know something that you feel it? You feel that you've got the Holy Spirit? So that's your that's your standard? Well, nudges. I, I get these I get these holy ghost bumps, you know. I get these premonition. I, I get visions. I got the Holy Spirit because I was I was at a funeral and I saw a vision of Elijah and Elisha and a mantle fall from the sky and God told me this is what that means. Take up the mantle. Take up the mantle of Billy Graham. Friends, Billy Graham's not a patch. He's not even a, a thread on a patch of Elijah or Elisha. So, but but here's a man saying, well, I've seen visions. I've had nudges. I've had, you know, premonitions. I've had dreams. And all of these things, I'm not making fun, friends, but all of these things are what people say what they give as evidence that they have they have the Holy Spirit. They have some miraculous gift or they have some imparting of the Holy Spirit. But if Paul had asked that question, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? He would have followed up with, well, how, how do you know or how did you receive it? How did you receive it, these gifts? How did you receive the Holy Spirit? How did you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit? You know, how, how would I know? And that's that's what I'm saying. See, I want I want some evidence. I want some proof. I want some some manifestation. Look at John chapter five verse thirty one. Jesus said, "If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true." Friends, if your if your claim that you have the Holy Spirit, if it's based upon your own testimony, uh, that wasn't even good enough for Jesus. So I don't know why you expect anybody to believe what you say. Why do you expect anyone to take what you say about your having the Holy Spirit or your having these miraculous gifts because you said it? You tell your little vision, you tell your little dream, and everybody's supposed to believe it. No, I'm not believing Ellen G. White. I'm not believing the Seventh-day Adventists when they talk about someone had a vision. I'm not believing the Mormons when they say Joseph Smith had a vision, saw an angel, whatever. I'm not believing it. And I'm not believing uh, Mr. Lackey when he, uh, Lasky when he says he saw had a vision of Elijah and Elisha and a mantle falling from heaven and God saying, take up the mantle of Billy Graham. I'm not believing it. Uh-uh. I ain't doing it. I'm not, not believing it. See that? So... Why, why, should, why should we believe it? Listen, receiving the Holy Spirit was connected to something. And Paul understood that. That's why he asked the question. He understood that it was connected to what they had been taught. Now think about that for a moment. These people that say, well, you get the Holy Spirit uh, because God just gives it to you or God gives these miraculous gifts, so forth. Paul didn't didn't think that way. Paul understood that receiving the Holy Spirit, miraculous gifts and so forth, he understood that it was connected to what they had been taught. In other words, the miraculous gifts that came uh, from the Holy Spirit were in connection. It confirmed what they had been taught. And that's why uh, when you're reading in Acts chapter 19, Paul said, they said, we hadn't heard about the Holy Spirit. And Paul said, unto what then were you baptized? What were you taught about baptism? Because there's a connection with what you're taught to receiving the Holy Spirit. And they said, John's baptism. And then John said, and Paul said, John, John bab verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. 
Paul said John's baptism was a preparatory baptism. It was preparing Israel to receive the Christ so that when he, won't, when he came on the scene, they'd be ready. And when they heard this, the Bible says, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. See? In other words, so Paul was basically asking them, what were you taught? Have you received it? Have you received the Holy, Holy Ghost since you believed? Because it, the Holy Spirit didn't come before, during, or, or immediately after. It had to come through the laying on the apostles' hands, and they said no. So Paul said, well, what were you taught? How did you, become to be, how did you come to be believers or disciples if, if you weren't taught? And they said, well, we're taught John's baptism. So John's baptism got them enough to, to believe, but it didn't get them where they needed to be. You see? And so miraculous gifts from the Holy Spirit were, were used to confirm the message and to confirm really some, uh, some confirmation that what was being said was the truth. I mean, John, Paul could have been someone coming along and, and fooling these people, tricking them into believing something else. So they needed some confirmation that what, John, that what Paul was saying was true. So what did he do when, when they obeyed the gospel as Paul was teaching it? <coughs> he laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. That was, that was evidence to them. And it was evidence to everyone else. Hey, this, this is, you know, this is indeed receiving the Holy Spirit. In Mark 16, 15 through 20, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now listen to verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Then, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Miracles were used to confirm the word of what was being taught. It, it was to confirm the message. That, that's why it was connected to... Uh, the preaching of the gospel in the first century. Romans chapter 15. Look at Romans 15. Uh, in verse 18, I'm quickly running up against the clock. Romans 15, 18 and 19. Write this down. You can read it later. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word or deed through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. When Paul preached the gospel of Christ, what was connected with it? Mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. Friends, receiving the Holy Spirit was connected to what they were taught. And today, Today, someone says, well, I need to receive the Holy Spirit too. Why? Why? There's no need to receive the Holy Spirit today because we have the word that has been delivered. If, if, you, want to, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit today, receive his words, right? Paul says, what have you been taught? Well, I've been taught this and that about the Holy Spirit. It's not in the Bible. But once the Bible has been fully uh, revealed, fully given, uh, Paul said in Colossians 1 verse 23, Colossians 1 verse 23, he said, If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, to be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, made a minister. The gospel was fully revealed, fully given in the days of the apostle. We have no need for miraculous gifts from the Holy Spirit to confirm anything that was said because we have the Bible. And that's what I'm saying. When someone comes along and says, well, I had a vision. I saw Elijah up in the sky and the chariot of fire and I saw a mantle fall down. Don't give me all that. And then, tell, and then give me an interpretation of, well, that's God telling me to pick up a mantle. No. No, you didn't. 
That's not in the Bible. That's that's nothing like in the Bible other than you, you're quoting a, uh, a story about Elijah and Elisha from the Bible. But God didn't talk to you and tell you that. Because today God speaks through his son, through his word, Hebrews chapter, chapter 1. So I'm not believing what people say about the Holy Spirit simply because they say it. Now listen to what Paul did. Paul connected belief with baptism. Are you with me here? Now, somebody will say, well, yeah, you believe and then you're baptized. No. No. Listen again what Paul said. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, no. Now, Paul could have said, then what were you taught? Then what have you believed? Right? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? No. Well, what do you believe? But he didn't say it that way. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, no. And he said, unto what then were ye baptized? You know why? Because belief is so closely connected to the baptism that you can't be saved without believing and being baptized. I mean, why didn't just Paul say, what did you believe? But instead he asked, well, unto what were you baptized? Why? Because he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. See, when you're, when you're looking at the Bible, friends, and you're just reading these questions, you're reading, this, you're reading what happened, and you're, you're, you know, you're taking it all in, you're listening to what Paul said, listen carefully to what Paul said, he'll tell you, give you a lot of information simply by listening to his questions. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You know what that question tells us? It tells us they didn't receive the Holy Spirit before they read the Bible. He didn't, he, the Holy Spirit didn't illuminate anything for them. They didn't receive the Holy Spirit uh, at the point of their belief or point of their salvation. No. They didn't spontaneously get it after they were baptized. They had to receive it through the laying on the apostles' hands, the, the miraculous gifts that came from the Holy Spirit. They had to receive them through the laying on the apostles' hands. And it was connected to what they had believed, and therefore belief was connected to them being baptized. That's why Paul asked that. And you get all of that just from reading those few verses and paying attention to what Paul's saying, what Paul's asking. So no need to receive the Spirit today. Today what you need to do is receive his word. James says in James 1, verse 21, James 1, verse 21, he says, Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Put away all the filthiness and the abundance, the superabundance of, of, uh, uh, of naughtiness, of evil, badness. Put, put that all away and receive with meekness the engrafted word that can save you, that is able to save your souls. It's able to save your souls if you'll obey it. See that? Able to save your souls if you obey it. Friends, I hope you understand that when we're when we're encouraging you to study your Bible, I mean think critically. Let's you don't know, stop and say, now why did Paul say it that way? Why did he ask that question? Why did he why did he ask, have you received the Holy, Spirit, Holy Ghost since you believed? It must be because receiving the Holy Spirit came after that point. And today, today we have the message that the Holy Spirit has revealed to us, and that's that's what we need to obey. It's the Word of God. Friends, I'm running out of time. I've got just a few seconds left. And so I want to encourage you, if we can help you in any way, we want to do that very thing. You can Again, you can contact me at wordfromthelord at gmail.com, at wordfromthelord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653, 276-340-2653. Or you can meet with us at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, Sundays at 9, 10, and Thursdays at 11. I hope you will always uh, make sure that as you're studying the Bible, you don't just take what someone said at face value. Always make sure that what you're getting is indeed a word from the Lord.